Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's lecture continues um, the topic of motion and uh, we will talk about trajectory of the motion. Trajectory, that's the um, theme of this lecture. Now, uh, this lecture is part of the course uh, called Physics for Teens. Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com website. Um, now, if you found this lecture somewhere else, on YouTube, for instance, uh, I do recommend you to go actually through the website because it contains notes and exams for uh, some students if they want to take it. Um, so basically, it's uh, a little bit more functionality uh, than just a plain lecture. Okay, trajectory. First of all, what is trajectory? Now, we know that motion is actually change of the position uh, of a certain object which we actually model as a geometric point in three-dimensional space where we live. Okay, now when the object moves from one position to another, well it leaves actually the previous position empty and then it takes another one and then it leaves this position empty and then goes to somewhere else. So as we observe the object, we can see its position at certain moment uh, uh, of time, and then maybe another moment, and then another moment. So, what is trajectory? Well, trajectory is basically exactly a set of all the points visited by this particular object during its motion. So, this is kind of an explanatory um, uh, discussion. Now, a little bit more rigorous definition of what actually trajectory is. Well, in some way it's similar to a definition of graph of the function. So if you remember the graph is just a bunch of points on two-dimensional um, plane with x-coordinate be being an argument and y-coordinate be being a function. Here we have exactly the same thing but it's in the three dimension. Now what is the argument? The argument is time. Now as we know the, the, the position uh, of uh, uh, our uh, object or point is defined by three functions. That's what we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture. So these three functions, which are x, y, and z coordinates, in some uh, Cartesian system of coordinates established in our space, so these three functions actually define the motion. Now, t is time, x, y, and z are coordinates. Now, usually the time uh, is um, a variable, the argument actually, which belongs to certain interval. Uh, let's say from zero to some time limit, capital T, whatever it is. So, now the definition of the trajectory is a set of all points with these three coordinates, where t is uh, any value from zero to some kind of a limit t. So the collection, the set of all the points visited by our object during the time of motion, and the time of motion is from the time equal to zero to time equal to capital T. So the collection, the set of all these points, represents actually the uh, the trajectory of the motion. Now, um, can we see this trajectory? Now, the graph of the function we can actually represent and we can see the graph, right? Well, basically, in three-dimensional space it's a little bit more difficult, but in certain cases we can actually see it quite quite visibly. For instance, if our movement is not really in three-dimensional space, but in the plane, two-dimensional plane, and it represents it actually as a paper. And um, we use the tip of the pencil moving on this paper. Well, whatever the trace it leaves, this is a trajectory of the tip of the pen pen pencil. Now, we don't have three-dimensional paper, so to speak, and some kind of a pencil which we, which we can see. However, in certain cases, actually, it is possible. For instance, there is a famous uh, Wilson uh, cloud chamber. It's actually a chamber with vapor. And whenever 
some kind of elementary particle is going through this chamber, it leaves within the vapor inside the chamber, it leaves some kind of a trace. And you can see, you can photograph this, this trace. That's how actually how certain physical experiments with, um, with elementary particles were conducted. So in some cases we can see it even in three-dimensional space. But we don't really have to, you know, see or feel it. You can always imagine that there is some kind of a curve in the three-dimensional space which describes the tip of this, the, the movement of the tip of this pen, for instance. So I'm putting this something in the air and you can imagine that there is a trace in it. That's the trajectory. Now, um, I would like to point a very important uh, property of this trajectory. Well, actually, it's the point, it, it's the property of these three functions. Now, these three functions must be continuous in mathematical sense. Um, why? Well, let's just imagine that uh, one of those functions, let's say x function, is discontinuous, which means it uh, goes um, uh, w within the x-axis uh, at, at certain speed, let's say, and then all of a sudden it jumps to a, a different location. Let's say from a, from a location x equals 2 at time equals whatever. Immediately after this is the next in, in, infinite infinitesimally small uh, interval of time, it jumps to location x is equal to 2, for instance. Well, it doesn't happen in practical life, right? Because that's actually the dream of science fiction, uh, when we have some kind of a rocket or whatever else, you press the button and it immediately transports you to another planet. So that does not happen in real life. So, in the physics which we are learning, we are assuming that these functions are uh, continuous. All right, so, uh, I think the only thing which is left is just to, to have a couple of examples um, of a trajectory or trajectories which we will probably be dealing with. The simplest trajectory is always a straight line in a three-dimensional space and um, in this particular case, when we know that the object is moving along a straight line, now, basically the system of Cartesian coordinates is at our control. What's very convenient is to choose, let's say, the x-axis to be along that line of movement. y and z would be perpendicular, and that's why the coordinates, y and z coordinates, will always be zero, right? So if you have this Cartesian system of coordinates and we basically are talking about movement within the x-axis because it's our choice, right? So we have chosen x-axis to be along the movement and uh, zero point obviously we have chosen as the position where movement starts at t equals, at t equals to zero right so what will be the good um, uh, example of movement down the x line well this is the function which basically corresponds to this movement so as t is increasing xt x of t which is x coordinate is also increasing and basically it's increasing in such a way that for equal increments of time uh, would be equal increments of lengths of the distance covered, so to speak. But obviously for any point on x, the y and z coordinates will be zero. So these three functions describe the motion along the straight line, which is uh, an x-axis, and uh, not just any motion, uh, but the motion which is actually uh, quite even, which means with even increments of time, you will have increment, e equal e e increments of mm, distance. Now, obviously, the straight line movement doesn't have to be along the straight line with such a equality in, in, in increments, right? Uh, we can have some kind of jiggery movement. Um, so, um, uh, one of the examples 
of uh, basically moving back and forth would be if x function is not something like this but is changing I don't know, sine or cosine whatever so it goes back and forth back and forth all the time now another example for instance of straight line movement would be something like this 2 to the power of t well this movement is actually accelerating because with uh, bigger t um, we will have the increments moving a little bit faster I mean, I mean the, the, the distance covered would be would be would be faster uh, than with small t's right so that would be uh, a non-even so to speak not very um, uh, constant it would be accelerating actually um, we didn't talk about acceleration, yes, but you obviously understand that's what it is. As t is increasing, the distance would be increasing with more and more speed, so to speak. Um, so these are all examples of uh, straight line movement. Now, what other uh, movements we will be um, talking about? Well, circular movement, that's another example. Now, whenever you have a circular movement, circular, it's very convenient to choose the xy uh, plane of the system of coordinate within the plane of the movement, right? And the center of the circle around which our um, uh, object is moving should be actually the origin of the coordinates. And the z axis should be perpendicular to this axis, in which case z coordinate will always be equal to zero, right? So the movement is within the x y, um, within the x y uh, plane. So that's how it will move all the time, and uh, uh, the center of the circle is origin, um, and uh, z is perpendicular to the plane of movement. Now, what can be an example of uh, the movement of this particular type? Um, now, obviously, whenever you are, your um, x coordinate and y coordinate should ro always be uh, should always satisfy this equation, right? Because of the theorem, Pythagorean theorem. This is, for instance, y, and this is x, and obviously, it's always. So sum of squares is always the equals to r square. So as long as you have this, and z is equal to zero, you will have a circular movement. Now examples, for instance, well, x uh, of t is equal to r cosine t, y of t is equal to r sine t, and z is equal to zero. This is an example of such a very um, evenly spaced, evenly s uh, uh, with, with the same speed, so to speak. Again, we did not define speed, but you understand that this is some kind of a circular mo mo motion with uh, no jiggering around, etc. But obviously, we can have some other functions which satisfy this equation, which means it's still circular, but it can be this way, and then this way, and then this way, or something like this. So that's another example of the trajectory. So we have a straight line, and as an example, we have a trajectory which is within the plane, for instance, circular. And the third example which I would like to offer you is a real three-dimensional um, uh, trajectory. <coughs> Now, my example is basically um, a very simple one. Uh, we all know how the corkscrew works, right? So, you, let's say your bottle stands on the table, you put the corkscrew on the top, you screw it, and the tip of the cork is going down, down, down in this um, uh, uh, movement, uh, which is actually a spiral, right? So. In this particular case, what makes sense is to have, well, let's say this is your bottle, this is your cork, 
and this is your screw which goes in. So let's consider this tip. Now what's very convenient is in this case put z-axis down down the center of the bottle, right? The axis of the bottle and it will be the center of this spiral corkscrew and uh, and this plane which is perpendicular should be actually the plane where you will have x and y. Now what happens in this particular case is on one hand as we go down the screw goes down and the tip is changing its z position in some way as it just basically going down 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 an example can be obviously it depends on the speed how we uh, how how we rotate the, the 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 corkscrew but for example it can be something like this so as t is increasing well a is positive hopefully we go down increasing the z coordinate now how the tip would be relative to x and y coordinates well it actually is circling so if we project the tip of this corkscrew onto this plane which is aligned with the bottle with the top of the bottle it will actually do the circular movement which means x can be equal for example r cos sine t and y can be equal to r sine t where r is the radius of this spiral from its axis to the outer diameter. So this is a trajectory, basically trajectory will be this spiral or helix I think it's called scientifically. So the trajectory would be this uh, spiral and these are equations uh, which represent functions. Obviously this is x of t and this is y of t. Uh, which describe this particular trajectory. So these are a few examples of trajectories in our three-dimensional space and obviously there are infinitely many different very very complicated trajectories of God knows what and God knows how but obviously we will <laughs> study only the most simple ones something like straight line or a circular movement or you know similar to these. We are not going to to do some kind of a uh, research in, in, in very difficult trajectories, etc. Our movements, our laws of physics will be related only to simple ones. But look, I mean, any complicated uh, movement can be always represented as a combination of simple ones. So that's one of the ways around this. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.